<laughs> and here to pay tribute to Paul, I'm delighted to welcome Vanity Von Glo. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thank you. It's I, nice to be here. I think Paul O'Grady, I think Lily Savage was probably my first encounter with the drag as an art form on right. TV as a child. And uh, yeah. re really pioneering stuff. Well, yeah, but I, I think the thing that strikes me is that Paul O'Grady is so many people's first introduction to drag yeah. because it was so mainstreamed. But we actually have quite a rich drag tradition in the UK. Yes. And so there were, you know, little little nods to drag and the absurd camp comedy throughout television before that. Yes. But yeah, I mean, even myself, I remember hearing this strange voice on the TV. I think it was Parkinson. <laughs> Lily Savage was on Parkinson. And the same thing happened to me a few years maybe it was like a year later, I heard this strange voice on Parkinson. I had to come downstairs. Who is that? And it was Dame Edna. Ah. So I knew then I was obsessed. <laughs> um, and you know, but Paul O'Grady had such a great, like, vinegary sense of humour, mm. which I think of as being really British. Yes. Um, I don't know how many of you would have seen an American drag show, but American drag is very camp, but the camp almost relies on quite a cheeky, I think slight, I sometimes say, a slightly infantile sense of humour. Yes. It's all, there's a childish optimism to it, which is very charming. But here, the British drag is... Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> sucking on a cigarette, yeah. really, really dry. And that's humour that we all love. I mean, I think, I remember as a kid being shocked, actually, by some of the things Lily Savage was saying, because... Yeah. It, and the drag shows I've seen in, you know, drag, as you say, can be really waspish, acerbic, sometimes mm. really shocking and offensive. Yeah. Really, you know, and he would do the same, you know, yeah. particularly in the live performances. There's a great thing that uh, I think great comics do, but definitely that Lily Savage would do, which would say something that's uh, package something that's quite on the nose and quite offensive, but it would take you a minute, you'd have the laugh, and then you'd go, oh, that was actually really bad, but we'd already moved on. Yeah. And so by then it's like, well, you've missed your moment to put your hand up and complain. Yes. Um, and there's a fearlessness that's required to do that, which is one of the things that Paul O'Grady had spades off, you know? Yeah. I think it probably comes from that, you know, to be a fearless comic, well, you, to, to be a fearless comic, you either have to be a total dickhead. Um, <laughs> but I think in Paul O'Grady's case, he was actually enormously compassionate. Yes. He had a real warmth. Lily had uh, a, a warmth underneath all of the, you know, that, pantomime of it. I think that's a really interesting point because, yes, Lily Savage would say these waspish, cutting things, but yeah. you, you warm to her. Yeah, you know, absolutely. That. Yeah, I mean, think about how long, I mean, I think... Lily Savage was doing like morning television appearances mm. in the early 90s and then right up and I mean right up until recent years Paul O'Grady was on TV so to sustain 30 years as a comic in that level of scrutiny and with that many people watching you have to be warm people have to yes. like you if they're going to like you for 30 years absolutely and do you think seeing that kind of figure on TV had a kind of positive effect on on other artists other creatives yeah, I mean, I would think so. I'd say that there's probably not many people that do my job that haven't been influenced by Lily yeah. Savage in some way, in the same way that, you know, I'm obsessed with Dame Edna, Barry Humphreys. Um, yes. And, uh, you know, just when you see something you like, uh, in the same way that with my music, the shows that I do are live music shows, you know, I have been told I have the voice of a British Celine Dion. <laughs> um, you just emulate the things that you like. There's a, you know, I wouldn't say you imitate it, but you, we're magpies creatives, so we take just little yes. inflections and, and that's what makes watching, uh, you know, artists so interesting because when you can really, especially musicians, you can then really see their influences and hear where they've come from. And there's something very interesting about uh, drag or the creation of a persona and that distance between who the person is authentically beneath all of that and yeah. what they create. Yeah. I think we saw that with Paul O'Grady very much when he got his own show. Yeah. And all of a sudden it's people who hadn't even seen people him without know, makeup. Yeah, absolutely. And people didn't, you know, know Paul O'Grady's name. Janet Street Porter said she went to a, a dinner party, some fancy thing. No, she didn't tell me this. I watched her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought she, that was a good name. Yeah, she, was, she was sat next to this person and on the name tag said Paul O'Grady. And she went, who on earth is that? And then he came and he sat down and went, I'm Lily Savage. And she had no idea, you know, and, and she was familiar with Lily Savage, but his, uh, his identity was concealed, which I actually think is kind of the right thing for uh, for drag. I mean, nowadays we have shows that show how the sausage is made, like RuPaul's Drag Race, that people want to watch, you know, yes. watch that. I, f I find that tedious. I think that's quite a boring fixation on how the thing is put together. I'm like, watch the show, the show's the art, not the... I mean, is not the sitting in the mirror talking shit with your friend. Yeah. And what is the point, I suppose... Uh, oh, sorry, I'll just have to apologise for the bad language there. Vanity, <laughs> what, are you, what are you thinking? Um, oh, is the point, is it kind of like 
uh, a ventriloquist dummy insofar as you can get away with a whole lot more. You're saying Paul Grady had someone's hand up his... No, I wasn't <laughs> suggesting that. But you know what I mean, like, because you, I've seen you perform as well mm. and some of the, you know, the way that you, you, you get away with stuff, I think, when yeah. you're in the persona that maybe, or maybe Paul Grady wouldn't have got away with if he wasn't Lily. Oh, Do you know totally. I mean? I to I, 100%. I mean, um, you know, it's, uh, it, it's not just that, I mean, when you're putting on a persona, you're also taking on different status. Yes. Um, you know, I think this is one of the things some people that are worried that drag is sort of anti-feminist in some way, they miss this, that actually drag puts on the armour of almost the sort of divinely feminine. Mm. Um, you know, Camille Paglia used to say that her favourite feminism was drag queen feminism because the drag queens understood the, the, the visual power of fabulous, you know, imagery. Yes. Um, so, yeah, if you're going to de bedeck yourselves like Cleopatra, then you're, gonna, you're actually going to get just a little bit more leeway from people, I think. And, and even leaving aside the drag, Paula Grady was just a great writer, just yeah. a great comedic writer. Yeah. It's really hard. Yeah. And his timing was just fantastic. Yeah, there's, he, he had a sort of Billy... I'm from Glasgow, and he has a slight Billy Connolly-esque thing which you oh, you couldn't extract his identity from where he's from mm. you know it's yes. so local and so you know endless stories of of characters from his own life Absolutely. that have, like that have made him who he was so yeah, yeah. you couldn't imagine anyone else doing those jokes no.